Well, I don't know if you know, but Bushmaster is back on the market. I don't know if many of you know that Bushmaster was gone for a few years and now they're back because you kind of have to know one before I guess you could realize the other. Either way, my first rifle was a Bushmaster like end of 2006 or very early 2007. I don't remember when I bought it, but it was right in that kind of time frame. And they actually had a pretty good name back then. So I was curious. I saw that Bushmaster had made the comeback. So I reached out to them and they did send this rifle out for me to test because I was really curious to see if anything had changed because my first one ran like a banshee. However, the receiver set was so loose, it was like throwing a hot dog down a hallway kind of loose. Now I would show you that old one, but it's what we call right now a bag of gun because it's blown apart right now in pieces because I want to rebuild it because it is like a decade over old, had a lot of rounds through it and it needs a barrel and just pretty much everything else. So the rebuild on that's coming soon, but if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link in the description for you so you can check that out. But let's go ahead and get right into the new Bushmaster and see what they've changed. All right, let's go ahead and talk about how the new Bravo Zula from Bushmaster comes and take a good look at everything that we get with it. So I will list the detailed specs over here so you can read through those. And we're gonna take an overall look at this and of course do some trigger pull. So starting from the butt stock and going to the business end here, we will have a rubberized rear pad, which is removable on the multi-position thrill stock right here. It is the SOP mod style design right there with a extended angular cheek weld on it. Couple QD points here, one towards the front, one towards the rear, and then plenty of area to route a traditional style sling through there. Activated right here. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with stocks of this style. Very standard end plate right there, no QD in it, mil spec tube and assembly. We do have a standard carbine buffer in there. As far as sitting down in the trigger housing group right there, we've got ourselves the two stage from Bushmaster. We will come back to that and do some pulls. Standard controls on here. You've got your uh, safe uh, semi and giggle switch should you be somebody can drill the third hole. You have a thrill grip on there and that is going to be a much less aggressive angle than standard A2. Extended uh, trigger guard. Like I said, we'll come back, do some trigger pulls and then you can see pretty traditional AR stuff all the way around there. We will get one Thrill branded magazine with a high vis follower on it. So not familiar with that Thrill brand at all. Going into the upper, let's talk about what we get here. You're gonna get a 9310 carrier and a Carpenter 158 bolt itself. It is magnetic particle inspected. As you can see, it is marked right there. Uh, gas key is properly staked in there. And then it looks to be I want to say this is nitride coated, but I could be wrong. It looks exactly like nitride. So if I am wrong, correct me in the comments. You can see traditional uh, mil spec style charging handle right there. Going into the upper receiver, you will see your forging stamp right there. If you don't know what that is, that is the forging company that did the actual forge on this and then it's machined out. Very traditional forward assist style nothing crazy on that upper receiver. We will have a nice long 15 inch rail. It's going to give you plenty of options. The things to put on there is completely up to you. Lots of M lock all the way around there. Clampshell style design on that. We do have a one and eight, five, five, six NATO barrel here with the Bushmaster branded snake charmer muzzle brake on that. So overall a pretty, Solid looking setup, pretty basic looking setup when it comes to the AR world. Let's go ahead and do some trigger pulls here and see what we got. So this is the two stage trigger from Bushmaster. So you will have that traditional take up right there. And then once we do some pulls, there's your first stage pulls through nicely on the second stage. There's your reset take up wall break. So I will say, it's pretty clean and I'm not a two stage trigger kind of guy. So let's do some pulls on this and we will see 
what it is pulling at. Get this stuff out of the way. So let's go our first stage. Start that over. Looks like our first stage is about just over two pounds. And then it breaks right at about four pounds and four ounces. So we'll do this a couple times, see what we get. I'm actually gonna extend that stock out a little bit so I don't hit it. So again, that first stage right there, just about two and a half pounds on the first stage and then breaking very consistently at the four pound and four ounce mark. One more pull unless I mess it up, and this one we're just going to go straight through. All right, so right there, four pounds and two ounces that time. So that's extremely consistent. Um, pretty solid setup right there as far as the trigger goes. So how about some of that range time and feel? Did I have any problems? And how about you subscribe? If you want to check this out, link's in the description. All right, out on the range, the thing is very soft. Got that mid-lane gas system, 16-inch barrel. And even though it's got a super cheesy name right there, the Snake Charmer Muzzle Brake, it did a good job. It's like super cheesy name, but it did exactly what you would expect a big gnarly brake like that was gonna do, and that was keep that muzzle extremely flat. Now the two-stage trigger that comes in the Bravo Zulu, cause this is kind of their flagship model right now, I guess you could say, uh, it was a normal kind of two-stage feeling trigger. It wasn't anything great, wasn't anything exceptional, but it was definitely better than your traditional kind of, I guess, mil-spec ultra gritty trigger in there because it was a little bit lighter. Uh, we will come back to the trigger to talk about something that happened here in just a minute though. When it comes to the rest of the build quality here, you'll see that thrill furniture on there. I did beat it up a little bit out on the range, so it's got some nice deep scratches in it. Only thing that really happened there was the uh, rubber end keeps coming just a little bit loose. You can probably see it right there, sliding and a slipping. So I just need to throw a little Loctite in the fasteners and that will probably be just fine. Other than that, had no problems with the furniture. Although I would say maybe stick with Magpul or BCM or one of the bigger names because it's probably going to be roughly the same price as the rifle goes. And that seems to be what everybody else is putting on them in this kind of price point. Moving into the receiver set, I have to say it's a lot better than my original Bushmaster circa 2007, which was so loose that it was just flopping around and all kinds of stuff. This is a much tighter fit of a receiver, which is definitely nice. As far as moving into the rail, you've got a nice big long rail there that you can stick pretty much everything you want on. Plenty of M-lock, plenty of pick rail up on the top. It's kind of a, I want to say almost like a Midwest Industries, probably like 2010 design where it's kind of a clamp shell with a couple of set screws on the bottom, which there's nothing wrong with that. It did its job out there and it will continue to give you service, uh, but it's there. It does what you need it to, not anything exceptional but will hold up for you. Coming into the controls of the rifle, you're gonna have a pretty basic charging handle, just a mil-spec charging handle. You will have a nice actually extended uh, trigger guard right there, which is nice than the straight old flat kind of uh, standard mil-spec version. But you're gonna get the basic controls as far as the safety and the magazine release, no upgrades there. But overall, the build quality on this seems to be much better than my original one. So on my original one on the, uh, the gas key, on the bolt and carrier group, wasn't even staked. Now it did work for several years. I had actually changed it out because I wanted a easier to clean one. But uh, this one is at least staked. It is that 9310 on the carrier and Carpenter 158 magnetic particle inspected on the bolt itself. I will say the coating on the bolt is quite nice. You know, looking at the charging handle, I did work it quite a bit, so you can kind of see that basic normal scarring on the charging handle. I didn't notice anything coming out of wear, out of place, anything doing what it wasn't supposed to do on this rifle. Um, I think they really wanted to ensure that they got these rifles right coming out of that bankruptcy and re-releasing the Bushmaster name. And I think for what it is, they put a decent package together depending on what kind of price point and what kind of options you are going to be looking for. 
Now coming back to that two stage trigger on there, I did have one issue out there. Um, I did clean it and lube it prior to going out to the range the first time. And that first time I went to the range, I noticed something kind of weird. So I'll roll in some footage of it here. Right there. So it's stuck right now. And there it goes. It happened a couple times out there where the two stage trigger actually kind of got stuck on itself. Like it wouldn't reset. So as my finger would come off the trigger, I wasn't able to get the appropriate feeling that I was looking for because the trigger was actually stuck on itself. Uh, that cleared itself up probably after the first two to three magazines. I doused a little bit more oil happen again. So could have been that there was just maybe a little uh, machining that wasn't perfect in there or something could have been caught in there. Uh, like I say, I did clean it and lube it prior to the range, but that is really the only issue that it uh, experienced out there. And like I said, I was not uh, light and lazy with it. I did bang this thing around. I did mortar that uh, stock into the ground more than once because I've never had the Thrill brand before and I was just curious to test it out. So speaking about that stuff and knowing what I know now, having tested this, would this, is there anything that I would change? Would I do something different on the rifle, especially for the price point? I think it was coming in at like 1149 and I, th I saw it somewhere for like 970 or right at a thousand dollars. So based on what the market's doing and everything else that is out there right now, I would have liked to have seen a couple of things, I guess you could say. Maybe ambi controls on there. And like I said already, just go with Magpul or BCM or B5 systems for the furniture on there because although this furniture wasn't bad, it did good. It just, it kind of feels, operates and just looks kind of like meh. And I guess that could be because I'm not used to seeing it. I don't know the brand. Uh, but I think for the price point of the rifle, you can get just a little bit more bang for your buck with some ambi controls and a little bit better furniture. And I know that might be nitpicking a little bit, but this is what we get to do here with everything out there that's in the market across all these different price points. We get to nitpick. We get to choose exactly what we want because we have so many options. So overall, I think Bushmaster did a good job. This, uh, the quality of this build stock right here, the factory way it is, is far superior than the Bushmaster that I bought in 2007. Uh, like I said, the gas key wasn't staked. The thing was so sloppy loose, it almost didn't, didn't stay together on its own. Uh, it did serve me well, but I will say the fit and finish of this one is definitely a lot better than the one that I had bought in 2007, which is nice to see since the Bushmaster brand has just come back out on the market. And apparently they're supposed to come back out with the ACR, which would be really cool because that's like the super hyped up video game gun that Bushmaster made. And I think a lot of people out there, myself included, would love to get that thing on the range and run it through the paces. So we've reached the point in the video where we make this official and you're going to subscribe, right? Or at least I hope you will. So give the video a like. If you want to support the channel, you can check any of the links out down below. I will have all this stuff and my original Bushmaster build list, the rebuild, and my blog post linked in the first uh, link there in the description. And I'll pin it in the comments to make it super easy for you guys. Let me know what you think. Are you kind of excited to see another company that had a pretty good name at one point coming back out into the market? Or is it just another vanilla AR? I'm really curious to know what people think because I like to see more options. I like to see more companies popping up, more innovation, and of course, more people in the industry making some good money. So you guys get out there on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you guys on the next one.